Alright guys, I'm here in my hostel here in uh, Chiang Mai, Thailand and today we're going to a new country, we're going to Myanmar. Now the world probably knows it or a lot of the world know it as Burma. Uh, they changed names, I think it was 1988. There's different, different political reasons for the change which you can research yourself. But uh, I am very, very excited to go and see this uh, brand new country. It's my 30th country. This country only opened uh, to tourists in 2008. And so it's like apparently super untouched, like really untouched. The locals are fascinated by Westerners because they just haven't seen them most of their lives. It's going to be an experience. I'm crossing the land border today, uh, Maysot. Uh, and then you go over the border to Mawadi, Mawadi, and then you get the, I'm getting a bus to Yangon to be called Rangoon, uh, when it was called Burma. Um, I'm supposed to like print off like um, my visa, but there's no printer here, so I'm gonna go to the border and buy it printed off and show them on my phone. I don't know whether that will be a problem to them. Probably not, I hope not. And I don't know, I haven't got any like an onward ticket because I'm gonna get the bus out of Myanmar. Maybe I should have already bought that, I don't know. We'll see when we get to the border, I have no idea. Um, but um, yeah man, the day begins, an adventure I guess. So uh, today we start in Chiang Mai, tonight we finish in Yangon. Let the adventure begin guys, let's do it. So anyway, I'm just waiting for my grab. Apparently he's like three minutes away. And we've got like an hour till the bus goes. The bus leaves at 8.30, it's now 7.20 so I've left plenty of time. But yeah, man, it's the whole mystery behind Myanmar. It's the whole mythical feel to this country that's like literally, even to this day, literally no tourists go, mainly adventurous backpackers. Uh, I think that's what's attracted me to this country. But whatever it is attracted me to this country, I've got high hopes, I know I'm gonna have a great time. And I can't wait to go over that border and uh, explore something truly different to what I've ever seen before. It's gonna be different, I know that for sure. Hello. Yeah. Thank you. And it's a beautiful sunrise here in Chiang Mai. Check this out here. Beautiful sunrise over the bus station. Damn. And so we've got a uh, one hour wait until the bus. Uh, bus leaves at 8.30, it's now 7.30. And uh, yeah, we're off to May Sot, the border. All good. Just at the um, halfway point here, and this is a set of town that most tourists don't see. It's like a super provincial round here. I don't know what the town's called or where I'm at right now, but um, we're about halfway to May Stop, so we're about halfway to the Myanmar border. So uh, that's pretty good. It's uh, I've slept most of the journey so far, so it's gone pretty quick. But just three hours to go. So we're just here at the border now and uh, there's so many like Burmese people here because they're all like looking at us because they find us fascinating. I think I've got a mark on my... <laughs> Better. So I'm going to cross the border now. I have no idea what I'm doing. I'm going to try and get a bus to Yangon but I'm not sure if there's any buses left. Maybe I have to spend the night in Mawadi. I have no idea. But uh, this is interesting. There was 
was a group of Burmese ladies that just jumped on the on the taxi then from the bus station to the border and they had this like yellow stuff on their face which I read is like some sort of sun cream it's actually quite beautiful I've never seen it before so apparently women in, in Myanmar wear like this yellow uh, I don't know what it is but it's like protecting their, it's like a sun cream basically in their country that was fascinating but already like you know there's loads of Burmese kids here because they're all like looking at us just like fascinated there's a little lad down there in a Manchester United shirt he was looking at us like smiling just like it's almost like being back in India where you're a bit of a royalty because like I say this country only opened to tourists in 2008 anyway man the border is just down there so I'm gonna leave Thailand be back in Thailand in about a couple of weeks maybe less about 10 days love this country man one of my favorite countries on the planet I love Thailand man Absolutely amazing place, but now we're going to explore Myanmar. I have no idea what to expect, but let's cross the border, go over the Freedom Bridge, and uh, make it to this mysterious country. Just gone through town immigration. This is uh, the Freedom Bridge. I'm technically right now on no man's land. This is no man's land. I am currently not on any country. All right, interesting. So I can still see Thai language on the building, so I'm still Thailand right now. I don't know how long this bridge, I think this bridge is quite long actually. But uh, once we cross this bridge we see like a really really funny language, it's like a really like bold and bankrupt great vlogger shout out. He coined it squiggle language. <laughs> really fascinating language but we're still in Thailand right now. If I jumped over there now I'd be in Thailand illegally. I'd probably die at the same time. It's a pretty big drop. This feels so surreal, just crossing a land border by foot. Just like literally walking across a different country. I don't know, it feels kind of adventurous, feels kind of weird. <laughs> okay, so there we go. That's the river that separates Thailand and Myanmar. And now, Myanmar. Cool. Already, like, Myanmar looks very, very different. Just the architecture of the buildings looks more older, just more dated, more aged than Thailand. There we go, there's the Myanmar border. Let's get checked into this country. New country, country number 30, Myanmar. Let's do this. We're in Myanmar. Boom. Brand new country. Stepping on Burmese soil. Here we go. Wow. This place feels different. It's different, it just feels more raw more Asian, I don't know, it's fascinating. Uh, they're all saying hello, it's weird, <laughs> I'm not used to this. They're all saying hi and looking at us and it's just a weird, weird feeling. It's very, very cool, they're very nice people already, you can tell. Cash withdrawal, saving the town. Yeah, I don't know how much this money is, we'll just say, we'll say 10,000, we need a receipt, yes. Declined. Hmm. Alright, so for some reason my uh, car's not working here in Myanmar. So um, there's a local guy trying to help me and fix it and see what's going on, but uh, I have no idea why. It should be cool. But uh, he's gonna try and help me get it fixed because I need some money. I can't be a Myanmar with no money. Things cost money in this country. Alright, guys, so it's now four weeks later. I'm now editing the footage on my computer here. And so what happened here was there was actually no way of getting any money. And so the local that was helping me, he said to me, don't worry, I'm gonna call my friend on the Thai side. He's gonna talk to the Thai police and they will let you come across to Thailand for just two minutes. You can use the ATM, the Thai 7-Eleven, take some money out, bring it back over to Myanmar, exchange it at a little street vendor, and then you'll have money and it's no problem. I was at the mercy of these police officials to let me come back into Thailand or else I had no money and was screwed. In hindsight, you should always take a little bit of cash before you enter a country that I had nothing, nothing at all. So, very quickly, I was on a bike and I was on my way back to Thailand. Here we go. Crazy so much. <laughs> Damn. 
technically I'm illegally in Thailand right now. Yeah. <laughs> All right guys, so let me just explain what happened then. I'm gonna look pretty weird now vlogging here in the middle of Myanmar. Not only am I white, but I've got a camera on my face and speaking to it, super weird. So, what happened then was, oh, what happened then was my ATM wouldn't work, wouldn't work in Myanmar. There's a bunch of people behind me looking at me. <laughs> Can you see them? And uh, it wouldn't work in Myanmar. And so the, uh, the guy helping me then, he had to smuggle me back over the Thai border. He had to phone his friends in Thailand to tell the Thai police to let me go over for two minutes, use their ATM, and then come back into Myanmar with Thai bot and then exchange it over here because I had no Thai bot and had no currency whatsoever. But anyway, I've got my, my currency and I'm in Myanmar and I'm all good and I'm waiting for a bus to Yangon which is like in an hour I'm gonna get some clips anyway of this border town right now before it goes dark guys we're just here right now um, at a stop so it's about 2 a.m. we've been on the bus for eight hours this is like a food stop so we're almost in Yangon we're three hours from Yangon it's been a crazy long journey um, the roads here are not tarmac or paved They're like dirt tracks the whole way so even even though it's not far from Mesot to Yangon it feels like a long way it's like a time machine man it's like an absolute time machine. It's absolutely fascinating. It's like going back into the 70s. And everyone keeps looking at me because I look like an alien here. And it's hard to get used to that. People don't mean any harm by it. They're just like, ooh, white guy, how weird. It's uh, so far, it's an absolutely fascinating country. Um, I'm kind of like a little bit culture shaken by it, blown away by it, because it's just kind of, kind of weird. Good morning, it's 6 a.m. We've made it to Yangon. We're now, as you can see, at my accommodation. I haven't checked in yet. And so that was a pretty rough bus journey. I slept through the most of it. It was super bumpy because uh, a lot of Myanmar doesn't have like proper roads yet. Um, so far, like I said before, when I was at the start, this place is fascinating. I'm blown away. It's like a time machine. It's hard to believe. Looking around at the cars, the people, there's so much like Buddhist prayer in the background. It's such a fascinating, raw experience so far. But anyway, as you can see, it's still early in, early in the morning. It's super dark, so you can't really see anything. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna go and check in and then I'm gonna get up uh, pretty, pretty early, take you around Yangon for a little bit to show you a little bit of the, the city. All right, guys, so we've uh, checked in and a uh, super cheap hostel. The hostel cost me about five US dollars per night. I booked three nights here, and I can't wait to go out and explore Yangon and uh, get some footage for you. So I'll see you in the morning. Mm -hmm. 